You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. Let us do this thing. It is time once again for the bi weekly options extravaganza known. As the option block, my name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever compelling, ever educational network upon which so many of you are just gorging yourself these days. And hey, we don't, we don't judge. Have at it. You got 15 plus years of content. You can feast upon our content for weeks, months, perhaps even years. We've never actually gone and, and timed it out exactly how much content in terms of hours, is there on the network now. But it is many thousands of hours. So if you were so inclined, you could indeed, you know, factoring in meals and sleep, you could definitely go for months. Years? I don't know. I'd have to work it out. But it is up there. Quite a bit of content. And, of course, you know where to go if you want to get even more. You want to engage with not just me, but all of our hosts, all of our guests throughout the week live. So the second a question hits your brain, instead of having to race to your Twitter or your email, wherever else you hit us up with on the questions, you can hit us right up in the secret chat there. Of course, you can always get exclusive shows as well. Great pro Q&A, man. We went deep on, started off on Vol in Ukraine, then we went deep <laughs> into pro level, Hall of Fame level blackjack play with our old buddy, Mr. Short Vol himself. Don Schlesinger, who, when he wasn't busy slinging Vol, would moonlight as a bit of a Hall of Fame blackjack player and author. He's created a bunch of systems that are world-renowned and used to this day. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. And he broke it all down for us on Tuesday's Pro Q&A. It was pretty amazing. I don't even, I'm not even a huge blackjack guy, and it was fascinating to me. So if you have any, even any remote inkling about, hey, I might sit down at a table someday in the next, I don't know, decade. <laughs> then you definitely want to listen to that. Of course, you got Options Oddities coming up tomorrow. Our team is putting together all the great giveaways. Everybody who's won the pro trading crates and everything else, those are all going out. You get access to all that good stuff and a whole bunch more. You know where to go. Theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. That's the place to go to begin your extraordinary journey to the dark side. And oh, what an extraordinary journey it is. Hope to see you in there. Love to see the folks engaging with the live chat and sending in all the other good stuff, participating in the Q&As. It's really good stuff. Questions, you want to learn about what the heck we're trading over there and watching over there at Oddities, you got to join the club. And of course, however you listen, live after the fact, keep hitting us up those questions, those comments, those insights, those pearls of wisdom. We do love to hear from all of you folks out there. Let's see who we are hearing from today. First, because it's one of those weeks, let's go out first to the quiet, never stormy, always tranquil, always happy shores of the Fox River, where we go beyond them a little bit to a quiet little hamlet known as St. Charles, where we are joined once again 
by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program yet again, sir. Your streak continues. The streak? Because what are we? I mean, I know I haven't been on every show, but I've been on quite a few of them on this network. Uh, but I think I'm over a th- I've got to be over a th- I know that our show is over a thousand episodes. I've got to have been on. I, I must have been on at least a thousand of them. I would, I would think. I don't think you've missed like 60 odd episodes. I think we're on like 1060, 1070, something like that. I'll have to go look and see. But yes, I don't think you've missed more than 70 or so. Definitely you're over 1000. So I, I should send you out the 1000 t-shirt. It's always a fun, a fun tchotchke for you there, for Uncle, sure. Mike. Uncle Mike. All right, and also joining us, he's probably done a thousand or so. Maybe not because he hasn't done all of the option block, but he has mixed it up with a little bit of vol views and now throwing in a little bit of oddities in there as well. So if we add them all up, maybe, maybe he's in the one thousand club. We shall see. He is the rockingest of lobsters, Mister Andrew Giovanazzi from OptionPit.com. Mister G, welcome back to the program. Do you think you're in the one thousand club, sir? Wow, you know what? It's hard to believe, but 10 years, that's that's something. That's a lot of goodness to give to the people. There is. And I, we also had that that hard streak for a while. What We did like half a year or a year where we did uh, we did oddities every day on the uh, TOS network. Oh, you're right. You're right. Because they liked the idea so <laughs> they much. They did. They ripped us <laughs> off wholeheartedly. They said, this is awesome. We should do a lot more of this. Yeah, and, let's just uh, steal it. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I think we did a fine job of laying the groundwork. Wow. For, wow. Why don't we have an internal radio network? For the entire so. TD network. You're right. I forgot to add in oddities. So if you add in oddities, yeah, you probably are over the, the 1K yeah. level. I think yeah. we did that, what, every day? We did that every day. That was daily. That, that was a lot of content. So, yes, uh, you're yes. welcome, TD folks out there, as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck is trading, what is lighting up our tapes, and man, what a week it has been. We've all done some living out there. Today, we're back on the dark side. NASDAQ leading the charge off a little over two, about 2.1%. S&P off 1.3%, Dow off about 1.1%. Yesterday, of course, we saw just massive surge to the upside. I think what the NASDAQ end up 3.5%, something ridiculous to the upside. S&P up over 2%. I mean, just ridiculous rally. But I think the day that caught a lot of people's attention, in fact, it was going on right when we were doing our pro Q&A with Mr. Don himself on Tuesday, was just the amazing whipsaw day. That was Tuesday, where we sold off hard in the morning, and then from trough to peak, so at the nadir of the morning, and then the turnaround kicked in in the S&P. We rallied about 110 points in the S&P 500, only to pretty much give it all back by the end of the day. That's so whipsaw, unlike any I've seen in quite some time. So that was, when we say whipsaw, that was serious business, listeners. 110 points to the upside, and then back again? That's a journey few undertake, let alone the S&P. That's just madness. So that's the kind of week we're having out there, listeners. So it should come as no surprise to you that though vol numbers have come in a little bit, things are still frothy. Things are still very elevated. Remember, everyone always conflates downside with vol. But movement is vol. Movement is what matters. And man, are we moving. So yeah, you thought vol was going to be, VIX is going to be you know, a 20 after yesterday's rally. Think again, coming into the start of the show, Bix Cash is at about a 32 and a quarter. That's down a little bit from Monday's show, only about two and a half points, though. VVIX, by the way, VIX hit a high this week of 37, 37.03 in all the madness earlier this week. VVIX is at about a 128 when we kicked off the show. That's down five points from Monday's show. That one was off to the races, as you might expect. Hit a high of 145, almost 146 earlier this week. VXX, which is the product. If you guys were coming for the fade this week, yeah, you were disappointed. VXX, 27 and a quarter, down a whopping quarter (laughs) from Monday's show. It hit a high of 29 and change, about 29.20 earlier this week. And UVXY, 20 and three quarters, down about a quarter of a point from Monday's show as well. So, yeah, they didn't really start eroding until a few minutes ago, really. So, they were pretty much unched on the week when we right before we kicked off the show. Uh, UBXY hit a high of 23 and about a quarter this week. So, yeah, if you were looking 
for a lot of that erosion to kick out. Remember, we've said it before. We said it yesterday on Options Boot Camp. We'll say it again. When the vol futures are backward, it's kind of hard for these things to really kick into high gear to the dark side. And if you're going to play that way, you got to sell something against it. You got to sell flies, preferably two things against it, <laughs> because it, otherwise you're just going to get run over. And Vol Q was at a 34 when we kicked off the show, down a little over a point, about a point and a quarter from this time last week. All right, let's go back around the horn the way we came. Let's start with Uncle Mike, because we all need a little bit of calming ray of sunshine in our lives after just the maelstrom that continues to be this week. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, what do you got for us, sir? Well, if... I never want to bet for the world to end because if I'm right, who am I going to collect? I'm scared now. I'm already scared where you're going here. I didn't expect that from you. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that I I know Mark's been talking about uh, next week being a really big week, which it will be. There's a lot of stuff happening next week. And so um, I think just with where we're going with it, uh, somehow we're still here. (laughs) That uh, I have a, far out of the money put spread that I sold a while ago. And somehow I'm still in it. It's still, it's still profitable. With this. So um, I think that with where we are with the markets right now, uh, 4,000 is uh, we're not, I understand the fact that we could have a sell off in 10 seconds and we could be below 4,000. I totally get that. I uh, have managed risks to prepare for that and have plans in case such a thing happens. But for the most part, the 4,000s have been holding off to be a pretty tough nut to crack so far. Uh, we've gone down to the 4,100 level. Uh, we've been slightly above that. On uh, Tuesday, we made another run down after the big run up, and then we had a big run up yesterday. And so it's like we're range bound, but we're very widely range bound, if that makes any sense. So for the time being, the market just seems to be happy with going all over the place. It's like um, if you have a two-year-old, the two-year-old's happy to run all over the place. But so long as you have uh, a playpen or a a fence around him or something, uh, he's usually fine. And so now it just feels like the market's going all over the place. It's like watching a two-year-old in the backyard, but at least for now, the fence is around the two-year-old, and it's not going beyond certain levels. But it is a big backyard. Uh, the other things with which I'm seeing right now is we have the 10-year note is sold off the last couple of days, so we're getting some selling pressure there. And I'll be interested to see if we do get more selling pressure in the markets, uh, what happens there, and if we get uh, a rash of buyers there. Uh, there's, You'd think that uh, there couldn't possibly be any more big news, but uh, what is typically, I would think, big news is now kind of smaller news is that uh, Biden wants to do some regulating with Bitcoin now so uh, and cryptocurrency. So there's uh, a lot a lot of talk about that, and I know there was a big rally in that earlier this week on that news, and I don't know if that's necessarily going to be good news for Bitcoin or not. I mean, time will tell, but that was one thing that we are seeing in the marketplace. And uh, right now, the VIX is still holding above the 30 level. And then the other things of note, of course, are oil. Uh, Oil's actually uh, $23 down or roughly, I believe it was at 130 at one point in time in the near past. And it's uh, over $20 down and it still is super high. So oil is really high even with that. Uh, The other thing that is kind of, I don't know if it's concerning, but just kind of a surprise to me is that Right now, oil, it's only down a little over 1% on the day. Uh, where's the movement? Come on, oil, you're, you're disappointing me with that. So looking at that, uh, we rallied earlier this week in silver. Uh, gold uh, is over the 2,000 mark again. So that seems to be kind of a little mini magnet number for gold right now. Uh, the silver is off of its highs. Uh, wheat seems to be calming down somewhat. And uh, everything is just kind of all over the map right now. And uh, I think it's going to continue to be all over the map until we get some type of uh, stabilization across the world. And that's what I'm seeing right now. Manage risk, folks. That's one of the most important things you can do in this market. I'm curious for you, Uncle Mike, as our resident permable, what was going through your head in that mad whipsaw on Tuesday where we're selling off, we're selling off hard. It seemed like the Ukraine news was really going to maybe test that level you were talking about before. We were certainly racing towards that 4,000 level. And then the BTFD crowd came in and just turned 
everything around 100 plus points in the S&P. And then we teetered on that precipice for a, a hefty minute. And then we turned right back around. What was going through your head in, in all those whipsaws, sir? <laughs> Quite a bit. So in, in looking at that, I remember just kind of going through that. And there was just it, it sounded like there was some type of rumor that uh, Ukraine was going to uh come to the table and do more negotiating and it sounded like something like that was uh, happening at first and so apparently that wasn't enough news and then uh, just kind of went right back down again uh, i hate to say it but i'm kind of in that type of expectation right now in that uh right now i i, I refer to this as a laptop market meaning that if I go somewhere away from my desk, I typically take my laptop with me because I, I want to make sure that I'm able to have the trades that I have queued up, ready to go, just in case I see something happen. So um, I'm really paranoid right now, which it's my job to be paranoid when I'm short put spreads. Uh, so I think that just in terms of what was going through my head with it, I hate to say I was expecting it because if I obviously if I would have expected it, then I would have shorted with everything that I owned, but I'm at the stage right now to where I'm just so paranoid of us, of the, sh the other shoe dropping that if we had a 200 point S and P rally today, I don't even know if it would make me happy. That's how paranoid I am right now. Uh Oh, not even uncle Mike, the resident permable would be happy in this. Just got a note. Speaking of uh, our short vol friend from the pro Q and a earlier this week, Mr. Don just sent me a note said this year so far, the S and P has had six, 2% or more daily moves. Last year, it had seven for the entire year. <laughs> so uh, Mr. Shortval, who infamously said options should be sold or not sold, said he is definitely sitting on his hands right now. This is a not sold environment. So bear that in mind for Mr. Schlesinger saying he's a little bit skittish in these markets. Let's go out now to a man who never saw an option he didn't want to sell. He is the rockingest of lobsters. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir. What is lighting up your tape this week? And also, same question for you. What was going through your head on that insane whipsaw day that was Tuesday, sir? <laughs> Good day to get rid of stuff on Tuesday. You had some opportunities. You certainly did. Um, you know, I am starting to be of the mind like Mr. Tucson, where this is just going to be around for a while. Um like and all these businesses just leaving Russia. Um, I, I I guess if you're a global conglomerate, you are you're like you know what? Like what kind of weirdness are they gonna? Is the world gonna continue to throw at us? You know, because they're they're in the business of trying to reduce risk and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what do you do? Do you keep a business open in Russia and you throw all your employees out of work and? You know, at some point, this is going to start causing problems for the Russians. Um, apparently, they think they can, you know, weather this storm or the or the potential gain is going to be worth it. Um, then, uh, as, as Tusa said, oh, there was potential. Um, uh, you know, the, the Ukrainians are like, OK, yeah, we, maybe we'll, we'll we'll take this deal. We'll take we'll take Putin's crazy deal. Um, or, and then all of a sudden they, they didn't want to take the deal. Right. Yeah. Cause we traded as high as four, what was that like SPY 432 and then down to 420. And so you had, um, anyway, so you, you have these, these huge swings, even, even the, our, our resident <laughs> premium seller doesn't want to sell options. Um, and I and I think that's just a symptom of what we have. It's a market that is fatigued by all this. Um, and as I recall, just trading these markets, it's actually best just to do less. I have to be on because you're just, you know, uh, you know, the day to day. I'm I'm looking for. There's a lot of stocks that are interesting to buy, um, but the most of the prices keep getting more interesting. So like it's like one of those things where every day you wait, things are. Uh, Things are going that way, and now we're, we've got the uh, ECB uh, basically stopped their QE program. I I'm glad, you know. I don't know what it's uh, they they have to do or how high inflation has to go before these central bankers kind of 
figure out what's going on. Um, they used to be somewhat elastic to what was going on, and now they're I don't know. They're I think they're in their own little bubbles. It's transitory. Um, to pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, Mr. Rock. Yeah. And uh and it and it very well, you know, and I mean, I don't know how much money the U.S. government spent over the last two years on this COVID thing. Um, and what's funny is they could have got away with spending not very much, apparently, from uh, all the new data that has come out on all of the lockdowns and the this is and the that's. So doesn't matter. They spent it. Right. And I don't even know if that money has actually been spent or has just been allocated to be spent. Um, anyhow, what we have is. Well, yeah. Andrew, if it hasn't been spent, they'll, they'll send us all a giant tax refund. I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, I just think you have a market that has is fatigued with all the news and everything else. Um, you know, VIX is 30, VIX is over 30, and the curve is relatively flat, um, which is not a normal uh, circumstance. Uh, at least normally when VIX is this high, you have a pretty backward-aided curve like it's like severely um you know those futures the the vol complex in the spx just doesn't look like that there's like oh wow we're we're really really about short-term movement but they haven't let all the vols lift in the back and that's not what we have right now it's uh, it's, it's a fairly flat curve um so the market's basically like i don't know how long this is going to last that's what I, this curve says to me i don't know how long it's going to last and normally I would say that VIX is primed to move when the curve is flat from uh, historical uh, observation, usually this flat. But it's rarely this flat when we're this high and the vol hasn't been like being slammed down. So a lot of strange cross currents. Um, but I just think though, I, to me, I look at this in the market says Putin ain't leaving. Uh and we're going to have to figure out a way around this and and figure out um, what could be like very real problems for, you know, the grain markets and the commodity markets and just all the industrial stuff that happens across the globe. And I don't think, I don't, you know, and basically what the market's saying, it's a problem. We just don't know how big a problem yet. Um, and, uh, you know, and I still go to the grocery store, and like at least in Maine, half the shelves are still don't have stuff on them. Um, so you think like, wow, you know, this, this global, these things, you know, you didn't have global supply chains in 1945, but you very much have global supply chains in 2022. So, so we haven't seen, um, I think this is a market that just hasn't seen the last, or we haven't seen the last of what's going on yet. So, um, and from a vol point of view, how much can VIX move from here? I mean, you need you need that conflict to have some resolution, you know, and, you know, maybe it, it dances up and down a little bit. But I have very, very. Mine says, I think you want to sell like iron condors or something like that. Um, something along those lines, um, own some stuff near the money and sell stuff out of the money and just see what happens. Uh, and that's I mean, from a trade point of view, that's really all I can think of. Uh, because that's what you know. That's what we have. That's the situation we have. Um, so I don't see us going up to forty six or forty seven hundred anytime soon. Um, but I don't see thirty five hundred either. But I could see the market just being softer, the foreseeable future. Indeed, sir. Let's go see what we're seeing out there from the overall market perspective right now. How much paper is actually hitting the tape? As we speak, listeners, and again, you might think VIX would be uh, popping a little more on a day like today, but we've seen a few of these. As Don just mentioned, we've already seen six two plus percent swings uh, in the S&P just this year. That's almost as many as we saw the entirety of last year. So once you've been punched a couple of times in the gut, you learn to cover up. Maybe you don't react as strongly <laughs> the next time. And that's pretty much what we're seeing out there in the markets right now. VIX at about 290,000 contracts. That's decent paper. It's almost half of its ADV, which has ticked up a little bit since our last show. It was about five ninety nine, I think, well, on our last show, somewhere around that level. Now it's six ten, so it has ticked up a little bit. So we're at about half of its ADV. Again, nothing to sneeze at out there, just not blowing the doors off. Spy at about three point four million right now. The ADV about seven point four million. Uh, the S not even at a million contracts, eight hundred twenty three thousand contracts. The ADV is 
1.7 million. So it's hanging out around half of its ADB as well. That's pretty much what we're seeing across the board. With the exception of the small caps, 302,000 contracts on the tape right now in IWM, its ADB is hanging out at about 838,000. So small caps have a bit of a way to go out there. Let's see how far we have to go here in the single name. So what's lighting it up out there from a top 10 most active perspective? And you know, if you pulled this up right now, you might say to yourself, ah, it's just a regular Tuesday where maybe we're up a tenth of a percent in the S&P. Not a heck of a lot going on because that's what the top 10 looks like right now. It only costs you 193,000 contracts to break into the top 10, not even 200K. So that's pretty light, all things considered. That gets you to Microsoft listeners. Uh, number nine, we've got Baba back in the action out there. 223,000 contracts for good old Baba. Number eight, Facebook, 229,000 contracts. Number seven, it's good old Ford at 249,000 contracts. Let's see where good old Ford is hanging out today. Right about 16 bucks. It's rallied up to about almost about 1640, and then it's back down to about, actually, it broke 16, 1580. So it's had. Quite the topsy-turvy week out there. Let's see, how low did it get? It got 1581, so it actually looks like today is the low for the week. So interesting stuff out there in Ford. Remember, it wasn't that long ago, folks. We just talked about it on Oddities. Folks buying the, what was it, the 2530, something along those lines. Verticals out there loading up size into the mid-20 handle. And again, just uh, global events <laughs> weighing on everything out there because otherwise the announcements from Ford have been kind of interesting splitting into the you know the electric division and everything else like that but not enough to keep the stock at its lofty highs that it was at just a few weeks ago but it's good enough for about a quarter of a million contracts today number six Amazon you may have heard unless you've been sleeping under a rock you may have heard Amazon doing the old stock split dance because why not it's like printing free money we've all learned that once you announce a stock split your stock rallies, uh, I don't know, 10% in the subsequent sessions. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's free money. Why wouldn't you? I'm amazed I took them this long to do this. I read somewhere this might be, this is their first ever stock split, which is a crazy town out there, but still intriguing stuff out there. Only good for 281,000 contracts today. I think it would do a little more. A uh, number five is Neo back in our top 10 after a bit of a hiatus, 305,000 contracts for them. Number four, NVIDIA also got kicked to the curb. For a brief period, NVIDIA is one of those names that was just a stalwart. It couldn't really go anywhere. But earlier this week and last week, it did got kicked out. But it's back this week, number four again, right back at its normal spot, right around the four spot. 371,000 contracts for NVIDIA. Number three, yeah, it's AMD still hanging out there. 446,000 contracts. You know, AMD is one of those impressive names. It almost doesn't matter what's happening out there. <laughs> it's always usually in that three or four spot out there. It's at 103.85 today, off six and a half percent or 720 out there. Man, what a uh, what a lot of vol we're seeing out there in AMD. Got as low as 101 and a half earlier this week here. Quite the year. We don't really talk about AMD a lot, but it's obviously had quite the run. It was trading 77 and a half a year ago. Got up as high this year as 164. We're kind of right in the middle of that right now at about little over a hundred bucks out there. So intriguing stuff out here in AMD. And also, again, always good for some paper. It doesn't matter what's happening. AMD always putting up the numbers today. 446,000 contracts. Number two, you know, it's Tesla, 728,000. Number one, looking a little bit closer to its old self here, the fruit company, closing in on a million contracts, 977,000. It's not one of those days where it was, you know, 600,000, whatever it did the last time we ran these numbers. So that's a little bit better. So the top end of the top 10 looking a little bit more respectable. It's just the bottom half that seemed to have a little bit of trouble getting out of their own way today. Let's see what things are moving out there on the earnings vol front because we got it for you listeners right in our hot little hands, hot off the presses from our friends over there at Orats. Yep, it is time for some earnings volatility. Let's start out here in the land of the move results reports, actually. This morning we had Portillo's. So our local, uh, local, not that local anymore. They're all over the country. They used to be a local phenomenon. Now they're kind of all over. Of course, went public last year, infamously, I think are at around 29, got up to, I believe, about $54 last year. And uh, looking, yeah, let's see, 57, 57, 73. Remember the meatball was all excited when he got some in at around, I think, 29 or 34. It is trading a little bit shy of that right now, 22.63. It was at 25 bucks when they went into their announcement. They were pricing in 10.8%. They delivered about 10%, 9.9%. So they obviously inflation and other things weighing on them, but they are quite beat up from their IPO price. I will admit 
Maybe it's the local uh, boy in me, but we do talk about Portillo's a lot. I did pick up some at these levels for a rainy day out here. So I'm going to have a little bit of Portillo's in my back pocket going forward. I wonder if I can trade that in for a nice, tasty uh, Chicago hot dog, maybe. Something along those lines. But uh, Portillo's moving a bit again. Again, another one of these names that was a darling of kind of mid-pandemic era and then now kind of coming under some heat. Let's keep looking out here. In terms of season, we kind of have the most, the final numbers out there for the season report. We just actually just broke all this down in a lot of detail on the advisor's option on Tuesday with the Oracle of New Hampshire himself, Mr. Matt. We ran and analyzed all the final numbers for the season. So if you want to hear a good deep dive into the kind of highs and lows and surprises and special events of the season from an earnings vol perspective, then the place to go is to the advisor's option from earlier this week because we're still waiting for the kind of new season reports there. No new earnings trades reports. They kind of wait to re-rack those for when the new season is upon us. But you know what? There are still some names poised to pop off out here. Let's go to Oracle really quickly. They are today after the bell. 76.10 is where they were trading when we ran these numbers. They were pricing in 582 in the past. They've moved 477. So about a buck and change extra juice. Is that warranted in these markets? Can we argue any amount of more vol is not warranted? <laughs> uh, Ulta going to the beauty products for the ladies. And hey, for the gents, you want to look nice as well. They're popping off today after the bell as well. 373.31 is where they're trading. 2481 is what they were pricing in. That's pretty juicy. But in the past, they've moved 22 and a quarter. So I guess you can say they, they merit such a extreme amount of juice out there in all things beauty beauty vol who knew let's look really quickly any other big names popping off here let's look let's go out to what do we got here oh here's a name one of you two of you may have heard of gamestop <laughs> that's popping off uh, next week let's get a little preview of that one 17th after the bell 105 and a quarter so still lofty remember it wasn't just a year and change ago it was sub 10 bucks so and then of course we had all the madness 300 plus i forgot exactly how high it got over the course of that madness let's see here 325 looks like here was the high uh so yeah one a little bit shy of that right now 105 and a quarter they're pricing in 1214 the past they moved 1558 so pricing in a little bit less juice out there oh here's our old friend stone cold <laughs> dicker stne there, I heard he's actually wrestling in WrestleMania this year. Stone Cold. That's crazy. Again, Lee hasn't wrestled in like 20 years. So there we go. Everything old is new again. Stone Cold, 17th after the bell. 1042 is where they were trading. They're pricing in a buck and a half. In the past, they've moved a buck 18. Stone Cold hanging out right now. Nine and a half bucks off nearly a buck today or about almost 9%. So it's like they're already pricing in some serious earnings juice. So wow. Uh, maybe that straddle is, is underdone given, given the move that's going on out there. Today in all things Stone Cold. Wow. Taking it on the chin. If you want to see more of that for yourselves, theoptionsinsider.com is the place to go. Meanwhile, we got to go on out of here and into our next segment. It is time to unleash the eye of Sauron. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Odd Block, the portion of the show where we break down the weird, the wild, the whimsical, the wondrous paper that is lighting up our tape on the week. And you know, Mr. Rock Lobster, sometimes... We have thematic odd blocks. Are you ready for such an occurrence today, sir? Are you ready for a thematic odd block? Today's theme, I think, could be summed up as people are spooked by multinational finance, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, uh, I think there is. I think that theme is um, uh, we have noticed that as well. I, and I wonder why. I don't know why you'd be spooked by such things. What, what possible tumult could there be that would cause ripples? Through the international financial system, I guess we shall find out together, Mister Rock. Put my I, finger on it. I just wanted, <laughs> I just wanted to give you a bit of a hint of what we're going to be talking about today. Get you ready. Get your gears turning. All right. First off, we're going out to a name we haven't talked about in a little bit. This is Credit Swiss Group, ticker symbol CS. Obviously, they do a little bit of the old international finance. 
trading seven dollars and thirty-two cents right now. A year ago, they were looking a lot loftier, pretty much double, right around fourteen bucks. And pretty much the entirety of this year has been just crap, <laughs> to put it mildly. Uh, let's see, they were they were trading thirteen and a quarter in March. Looks like they had some crappy earnings numbers because they sold off in pretty much a couple of sessions down to ten seventy, and they've bounced around this kind of nine to ten range for the entirety of the year. It was pretty much a lost year. And then just this February, February 9th, they were still trading 10 bucks, 1001. And then they just saw another just turn to the dark side because they have just gone uh, off a cliff ever since this uh, Ukraine thing really kicked into high gear. They sold off from 1001 to uh, yesterday. They hit actually this, no, yeah, earlier this week, they hit 689 before rallying a little bit of the last couple of sessions, giving some of that back up again today down to 732. So, Man, yeah, this is just a completely lost and wasted year for Credit Suisse out there. Again, you know, we talk about all the big movers and the S&P. You take out those big tech names from that list. Take out the FANG names. It's a very different story. The rest of the S&P has underperformed versus the FANGs and how much the FANGs right now are underperforming. But take that out of the recent last couple of months and everything else has uh, very much lagged those out there. And Credit Suisse, no exception. And as I mentioned at the top of the segment, some folks are a little bit spooked. This thing's already taken it on the chin. It already hit pretty much its low for the year earlier this week. Someone came in and said, you know what? That's not enough downside. I'm spooked. This thing might have more to go. I'm stopping myself out for size on the seven strike. They came in, bought 12,956 of these seven puts, uh, lifted the offer for 20 cents. I said 91 vol, if you're wondering. These are just March. So we're talking a week and a day. And they're already uh, scrambling for these. And then they said, we'll take 10,000 more for, uh, actually, these were earlier for 19 cents. They actually got a good fill on those, 19 cents, because they got a penny off the bid. And that was it. Everything else, they were lifting bids. Then they paid 20 cents for 12,956, 25 cents for 5,000, 20 cents more for 4,600. They bought a total of 53,000 of these things on the day, listeners. So that's a little bit. A little bit of vol, a little bit of action, a little bit of volume, and oh, a lofty, I don't know, 5.3 million shares that somebody is really spooked about. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, uh, usually we see these things, it's going out a few months, it's going out to June, maybe to the end of the year, and it's in a name that's a little bit loftier. This is a name that's already beaten up. You could argue the horse is already out of the barn here, but they're saying, no, uh, we got more horses to go. We want to keep them, and we want to keep them for the next week and a day. 53,000 times, Mr. Rock Lobster. <laughs> I, I saw this. Um, so, of course, uh, I, I'm trying to think of a worst investment. Like, if you try to put, <laughs> if you put money in something in 2007, <laughs> let's say, what would be a worse investment than Credit Suisse, UBS, and Deutsche Bank? I don't know. Uh, VXX and UBXY spring to mind. They both suck. I, I, think, I think those are the only two. <laughs> that um, as, a, as a global, dis- uh, not as a global, but as a destroyer of capital, I have to say Credit Suisse might take the cake. Uh, let me see here. Yes. So at one point in 2011, um, then of course you had the euro crisis. So by the end of mid 2012, that was a $16. It was $40, and now 12 years later, with pay, not paying a single dividend, um, actually they might have paid some dividends. Uh, okay, I, I you know that every year they paid a dividend, something something along the lines. Uh, so yeah, you, you, you got a to- you got some token money <laughs> coming your way, uh, in the form of a dividend, but well, for the most part, just awful, uh, performance, um, full of, a bank that's supposed to be full of smart people. You know, when I was, when I graduated from college, like Credit Suisse was one of the, uh, places to go and they had just bought Susqu- uh, O'Connor, um, and now, not so much. So, um, yeah, I just, they're buying these puts. I think there is a lot of Russian cash in these banks. Um, they might even hold a lot of Russian debt. And nobody knows what the heck's going to happen. So, I think people are buying puts because relatively easy for the shoe to drop and for them to close these puts. So, these are eight day puts. That's what's crazy I about know. this. 
So I, I can only assume they're they're thinking something not great is going to happen between now and then. Yes. So that's all I can <laughs> <laughs> gracing us with your precise analysis sir I love yes it. <laughs> and there, there could be some cds action as well you know there's, there's always be. the there's got to be yeah uh, there's got to be something either that i'm sure the red i i, I can't even imagine what they sold so they right. sold them for a hell of a lot more than 20 cents i'm guessing whatever the hell they sold way there the yes. one the one equivalent of the one strike put right. <laughs> and they bought they could have money to burn to buy these and obviously they probably expire in march that's probably why they did this but yeah, crazy town here in this. You know what? They never recovered from the death of T-Bix, sir. Once that went away, it's like, why would anyone touch them? They, they lost their reason to live. <laughs> no T-Bix, no, no joy. No T-Bix, no play. For no Credit play. Swiss out there. Let's see. You know what? Someone had a similar feeling. This might be the same guy, for all I know. Did pretty much the exact same thing out in Deutsche Bank this morning as well. Also March. So he's not playing around either. Deutsche Bank, obviously, ticker symbol DB. Also... As the name implies, a international finance conglomerate, 1064 right now. A year ago was trading 1282. They had a couple of runs. They had didn't have the complete wasted year that Credit Suisse did. They got up to about 15, 16 on June 1st. Then they kind of gave it up. They were hovering around the 12 to 13 buck range. Looks like for most of the year until this year, till January. Then they started rallying in January. Got up to in February, February 10th, 16 and a half bucks. This chart after this year looks almost identical to Credit Suisse because uh, once this year kicked off, Ukraine took over everything for these names, and this one just fell off a cliff as well. It went from 16 and a half bucks to earlier this week, nine and a half. So, yeah, quite the plummet there. It has rebounded a little bit here to 1064, giving some of that back right now. So, but obviously, someone is equally concerned with more downside in Deutsche Bank. Again, this was. Actually, this was almost the exact same time as those uh, those other puts are going up. So this does not surprise me at all of someone who's just got broad exposure to both of these. Maybe the same CDS person said, yeah, I'm going to hedge this one, too, because they came in and bought uh, 2,800 of the 10 half puts for about 50 cents uh, through the offer. They bought another 2,800 for 53 cents, and then they kept going total of 20,000 of these as well. So Mr. Rock Lobster, same time. Almost the exact same kind of trade. Maybe the same person you think out here panicking in all their international financial names, sir? I think it has the whiff of that on it. So, um, yeah, I mean, Deutsche Bank, not very long. It was 16 and three quarters. So it was up there even like as early as like mid mid uh, mid mid um, February and then started going away. So um, they're, again, not doing not doing well, exposed. Same, I'm mean, again, same issues, the same looking side. Like it was a $65 stock in 2011, and it just never really recovered from the euro crisis. And I don't think, I don't think any European bank, like, look at the mess that Europe is <laughs> in. So, again, if you want your money to go nowhere, um, I mean, I guess you could argue that you could try to scoop the bottom here, but again, like all the exposure, a huge wild card. Um, so anyway, I would say, um, somebody is, uh, my guess is somebody is selling something for much more than these puts are going to cost them, but there potentially could be another shoe to drop here with, you know, European banks and, um, uh, European banks and, uh, and what's going on with the Russians. I mean, that's, that's what it is. Um, and I, I, I mean, I don't know how many puts total were bought today between Deutsche Bank, Credit Suisse. I'm trying to look at uh, some of the other European banks, but I'm, I'm sure there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of puts bought. Yeah. So listeners, be on your toes in the financials for the next week and a day. That's what this paper is telling us out here, because they are expecting the bottom to fall out here and do so hard. I mean, these names are already beaten up and they're still scrambling to get more downside and a ton of it. And they're paying through the nose to get it. So that's uh, usually a sign that. The game is afoot and perhaps in the wrong direction if you're bullish out there. But you know what? We could do more, but we kind of come up against it. I want to get some of you folks on. It is Mail Block Thursday after all, so let's get out there next. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the Mail Block. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail block, the portion of the show where we get your thoughts on all 
of the madness that is unfolding. Speaking of your thoughts on madness, uh, we asked you <laughs> earlier this week, you know, Ukraine and the Fed, mostly Ukraine, driving a lot of volatility in the market right now. How long do you think this is going to last? Quite simply, where are you feeling for VIX closing at the end of March? You gave you nice wide ranges, which shows you how lofty things are right now. Because we can do six point Six point ranges, and it still really doesn't cover a lot of. That's how lofty VIX is right now. Gave you north of 35, so it's going to close above 35 at the end of the month between 29 and 35. (laughs) Just ridiculous ranges. Uh, Between 23 and 29 or below 23. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you, sir. What are you feeling? And more importantly, what do you think our audience is feeling for where VIX will be at the end of this month, sir? I think it's going to be about the same levels that it is, quite frankly. I think that, um, and I think the audience feels the same way. What reason do we have for it to go down? And I think until we get some type of resolution in Ukraine, I don't see it going down. But on the flip side, if it hasn't gone up to the 40s and 50s yet, when will it? Well, maybe next week. We'll see. So, But I think it's going to stay around the same level. Are you eating a delicious Portillo's uh, Italian beef as we speak, sir? No, sir. <laughs> okay. Just checking. Checking to see if you're supporting everyone's favorite name out there, Portillo. So he's, he has it right here, around 35 level. Mr. Rock Lobster, what are you and your alter ego? What do you think? And what do you think our audience is voting for? Um, uh, alter ego, I would say, yeah, it's definitely going to be the high 20s, low 30s. So whatever that range is, maybe 29 to 34 Okay. Um, It feels like that. Um, And I think that's what the listeners are are thinking, at least uh, till the end of March. So, yes, again, it's all it's all uh, contingent upon some sort of resolution. But it's all up to one guy, pretty much. (laughs) I guess so. Which is crazy. The world like things are a little bit goofy. It's like one guy just makes a mess. And then uh, so one guy feels like shelling a nuclear reactor. You know, hey, you know, what's what's a nuke between uh, between friends here? But yeah, look right right now, our audience is kind of feeling what you're putting down, Uncle Mike. They're saying here, so north of 35 is where we'll be at the end of the month. So no resolution through the end of this month. That's almost 36%, followed by number two, lower, even lower, actually, uh, 20, 23 to about 29. That's at 28.6%, followed by slightly lower at the 29 to 35 level. That's 25% of you, and only uh, 10.7% of you saying below 23, the much lower camp. So not feeling a resolution anytime in the next few weeks out there. And maybe that's feeding into and fueling some of the paper we saw out there this week in the financial. Oh, here's a fun one. <laughs> Mr. J3 Dingle, I haven't heard from him in a little bit. He's chiming back in again. He sent a technology suggestion for you and for your counterpart over there, Mr. Rock Lobster. He says, this is for the crew at the option pit. And he sent a uh, link to... Uh, a a mute button that you could insert into your keyboard, Mr. Rock Lobster. So he's trying to solve your tech problems for you. It's a pretty hefty 40 bucks, but it may be worth it, sir. What do you think? I don't think, I don't even think that'll help. Uh, to be honest, it won't help because I'll still forget. This, the one you got me, it just flashes in front of me and I still forget it. So I think it's just a hopeless cause and the listeners are going to just have to suffer through with the, with the inevitable, uh, the, the, inef- the inevitable sadness of the whole muting situation. Yeah, Dingle, I've tried to use technology to solve this. I got him a really nice mic. You can tell he sounds a lot better. And it has a big flashing mute light on it. And yet that is not enough, to. So I don't know if a keyboard solution. As funny, 40 bucks for just a key on your keyboard? That's juicy. But hey, you know what? Maybe the rock lobby. It doesn't light up, though. If it doesn't light up, I don't think he's going to see it. All right, let's go out, out here. Let's go out to Uncle Mike territory. I just like this handle. Sluggo. <laughs> Sluggo writes in. He says, hey, Mark, longtime listener. Love the content. More, please. Well, we love folks like you, Sluggo. Keep listening. He says, and just to prove that I like the content, I've started working with Tucson on investment management. So there you go. <laughs> Your influence is as contagious as it is compelling. <laughs> Well, thank you, Sluggo. Glad to hear you're obviously a man of discerning taste. He says, lastly, I'm a petrol head. Petrol. Maybe he's a, maybe he's across the pond. Usually you call him gearheads here. But he's a petrol head. He says, and I follow this bloke. Oh, yeah, he's British. And I follow this bloke from England on PravdaTube. PravdaTube. Wow. Okay. <laughs> he says, check out his shirt. It's an ode to your love of 80s wrestling. 
I thought as much as I'm old, but I do believe that shirt says Ric Flair <laughs> cheers. And he sends he sends a screenshot to this uh auto reviewer on YouTube. And yes, the guy does look like he's wearing a uh, a Ric Flair t-shirt. Well, Sluggo, props to you, sir. You clearly are squarely in our demographic. You're loving the content. We love that. You're down with the 80s wrestling <laughs> on Mondays. <laughs> you even like Uncle Mike. I guess there's no accounting for that last one. But Uncle Mike, he's clearly a fan of yours. And he clearly loves Ric Flair, another wrestler that you're into. What do you have to say here for my handle of the week, Sluggo? Sluggo is good people. And... um Definitely love it. And I actually, uh, just after talking with him, so initially uh, my football brain took me to where I thought his handle would be sluggo. That's a, <clears throat> if you're a wide receiver, that's a slant and go route. Uh, they just call it a sluggo. So, but uh, that is not what, it, what sluggo is about. So uh, if he gives permission, I'll be happy to talk about what it's about, but uh, nonetheless, oh. sluggo is good. You people. know, the secrets It's probably like some deeply dirty thing in Britain. I don't know. It's, it's, it's slang for something horrible, probably, but funny. Nonetheless, I just love it. Sluggo great handle out there. And obviously you're, you're a discerning listener. So keep it up there. Sluggo. Uh, we should see you in the secret club one of these days. It'd be fun. I just like, I want to see that handle sluggo floating around. All right, let's go to uh, well, Here's one for the rock lobster. Everyone's getting love on the show today. This comes another long time listeners popping in again today, which is always fun to see Scott Somer. He likes listening to the show on YouTube. He enjoyed our last episode, episode 1075, entitled King Philip's War. And he says, this is a hashtag rock lobster inspired title. And yes, you are correct. It was the rock lobster who, for some reason, which remains a mystery, invoked that extremely bloody conflict on the show last week. So, uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, your uh, genocidal historical references are not unappreciated, sir. Well, I just I thought it was appropriate to the recent genocidal uh you know uh conflict we have not in this country thankfully but uh across the pond yes so it was appreciated so listen good to see the appreciation rolling in from our listeners we appreciate all of you glad to see it's a two-way street out there keep listening remember if you like what you hear do keep rating and reviewing in your platform of choice it does help we know we have a lot of long-time listeners we love you all we're getting new people all the time and it does help those new people find a path to our doors versus let's say some of the more dubious outlets out there that are uh, trying to hawk all sorts of dubious wares and trading systems upon them. So uh, keep sending them our way as we keep on rolling into our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for the mail block. Oh, we got some Rocky love going on in the uh, in the chat again. Adrian and and, uh, <laughs> and Rocky going at it there. Yes, the '80s love never dies here on the network. Let's go around the horn, uh, Mr. Rock Lobster. We'll start with you because we started with Uncle Mike at the beginning of the show. What are you keeping an eye on and your and your alter ego outside of the apparently imminent meltdown of these global financial names outside of that what are you keeping an eye on for you know if these puts are right i may have to start looking into some uh some other crazy trades because things are apparently about to pop off mr rock lobster (laughs) um yes i mean that's it like okay well we we have uh we have vol where it is we have the market where it is and i think we sit here in suspended animation so as i guess we have the fed coming out next week you know, with whatever claim they have to try to kill inflation. But I don't know. I'm, I have to say I'm a little skeptical about our government institutions lately. So we'll we'll see what happens. But um, you skeptical? Push y'all, sir. I, I do not I, believe it. I know. It. I know. So that's uh, and so that's basically, you know, Fed next week. You know, do we hold 30 in the VIX? Does the S- S&P 500 do anything? Um just very stuck on the geopolitical issues right now. So that's, you know, might as well just read the Twitter sphere to see and try to divine what's actually real and real in the Ukraine or not. Like half the half of you get a report and then a day later or two days later, it's not even true. So it's like I, I remember a time when they used to there used to be news and people would and it would be covered like news. <laughs> and now it's just kind of, you know, 
It's, it just feels like crazy don't, town. Don't get me started on the 24-hour news. Like, this Ukraine thing has definitely had me consuming more 24-hour news than I have in, let's say, the last decade. I, I intentionally cut a lot of that crap out of my life because it's just noise. And doing this reminded me why I cut it out to begin with. Every channel <laughs> is just terrible. And not one of them can say, hey, here's exactly what's happening. It always has to have some sort of slant. I get it. That's what sells now. And also, my God, the commercials. The commercials in old school media are just off the hook. They merely make me appreciate this medium. Let me put it that way out here. But, yeah, interesting. So I can't wait for the next Thursday show when we can break down these uh, these puts and see how they fared. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on for until we gather here together on Monday? I, I mean, just everything that's going to be happening next week with uh, with expiration, with um, the Fed and, uh, oh, yeah, Ukraine. So I, I think just watching, uh, I hate to say watching the news, but just watching to see more importantly to me anyway, how the market's going to react to the news, whether it's positive or negative, and seeing where we're going from there. Well, we got to get on out of here, listeners, but don't worry. If you're in the secret club, you need more in your ear holes. We got you covered. We'll pump some fun stuff here. Maybe a little bit of OPR in between episodes. I'll be back in exactly 29 minutes to hold court on all the madness in commodity land. And spoiler alert, there's a lot of it coming up in a little bit on Twifo. We're taking on all comers. So if you got a complex, you got a product you want us to break down on the show, get at us. Hit us up. Let us know because we're going to take them all on this week. Whatever you got. I got a feeling oil is going to be in there. I got a feeling probably wheat's going to be in there. But outside of that, it's, it's kind of a dealer's choice. So hit us up. Let us know if you have a particular product you want us to break down here. But let's keep on going. Let's go around the horn. Let's go back to the uncle of Mike, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. If folks want to be like Sluggo and hit you up and perhaps develop a working relationship, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, you can go several places. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa, T-O-S-A-W. Check out my website, stcharleswealth.com, if you're looking for a financial advisor uh, who will actually uh, do stuff in times like this instead of uh, doing nothing. I prefer a financial advisor who just rides the market up and right back down, sir. But if you don't want that, if you're not like me, head on over to stcharleswealth.com and do something about what's going on out there. And here's a guy who loves to do stuff. He may have coined the phrase, he is the rockingest of lobsters. Mr. Rock Lobster, if folks want to do some stuff, where should they go to do said stuff? Go to optionpit.com, uh, go to membership. So remember, 888-321, ask for Ted. And uh, say you heard this show and get 10% off anything at Optimist. Just because you heard this show. Look at that. Something for nothing. There you go. Call Ted. Tell him Mark Longo is indeed the sexiest man in options. And if you say that, <laughs> you get huge discounts over there. Optionpit.com. That's what you have to say. If you have to say sexiest man confirmed, bam. That's the key to amazing discounts. Optionpit.com. To learn more, we got to get on out of here. I'll be back in exactly 27 minutes now to break down the world of all things futures, options, vol. If you're listening after the fact, just hit next. It'll be there for you. Back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for vol views. And then, of course, after that, for a little show we call Options Oddities for all you cool secret club kids. And then back again on Monday, another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.